What's up everybody, the Blue Fang here, and today I'm back with a new what if, which may sound really weird, but I'm sure I can try to make it interesting nevertheless. But I'll try to get into the background information soon, so you can try to understand this idea a bit more, but before I get into that, the like goal for today will be 250 likes for the next part. Now subscribe if you're new, hit the like button, and turn on bell notifications. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So to try to get an understanding of this what if, Naruto would exactly be a full-blooded Otsutsuki clan member and not be from the Leaf Village or not even a part of the Shinobi world. Naruto's life would be travelling around with the Otsutsuki clan, gaining masses of chakra and growing stronger as a clan. They're pretty much a group of power-hungry people that like to terrorise different dimensions for their own gain. Naruto would start to do this and get used to these events at a young age, but as the years go past, Naruto would start to get bored of the repeating events and would dream of going somewhere else and journey around some planet without just destroying their land. It also doesn't interest him to want to become immortal by consuming the fruit of a great tree, so he pretty much despises how the rest of the clan can see this as entertaining. So eventually Naruto makes a plan to leave the Otsutsuki traveling group and head to a place another Otsutsuki member stayed at and never returned, Earth, or more specifically the Shinobi world. So we start off this what if with Naruto actually beginning his plan of leaving the Otsutsuki for now. He makes himself be alone where no one else can see him and then he uses all of his energy to cross through dimensions and enter into the new world he has wished to go to. He had heard about two other clan members coming to this place and not returning, so he thinks that this place must be filled with interesting things that are making both Kaguya and Ishiki not return back to the clan, but he doesn't know that Kaguya is currently sealed while Ishiki is in hiding. As he enters this new dimension, he catches his breath from using up a lot of energy. He's currently weak at the moment so his Otsutsuki genes kick in, making him crave for chakra to recover his energy. He wanders around the land, trying to pick up any strong enough chakra signals that would suit him for recovery. Naruto is also not afraid as he thinks everyone in the shinobi world is weak compared to him. One thing I would also have to say is that Naruto's name isn't actually Naruto at this point of time. He's currently an unnamed Otsutsuki member and I'm just saying Naruto in the what if since he will eventually get that name in some way later in the story. I just thought I had to get that out to you guys. So back to the what if. Now at the moment Naruto can finally sense a large harboring chakra signal coming from a far off village. His heart begins thumping and his panting accelerates to the max as he really craves chakra. He starts running quickly towards the far off village, getting closer to this large chunk of chakra. As he gets closer, he activates his Byakugan clearly and searches for where it is. As Naruto scans around the village, some villagers walk around, peering over at Naruto's pale white skin. They make crude faces at Naruto, but Naruto doesn't pay attention. He just looks for the substance that will cure his hunger. Eventually, he's able to find the large chakra, and he runs towards it at top speed. Once he gets to the location, he barges into the house it is in, only to see two people that look normal to him. One has spiky blonde hair, while the other has bright red hair. The two people look at Naruto in shock as the blonde guy who was actually Minato Namikaze races for his weapons and defends his wife, who is Kushina. The large chakra Naruto senses is the nine tails that is within Kushina at the moment, but also within Kushina is a child who isn't even born yet. Naruto sees this with his Byakugan as well, surprising him and leading him to think that the unborn child within Kushina is the one carrying the large chakra, which is not the case. Minato decides to ask who this young person is, staring down at Naruto while shocked to see the strength of a child knock down his wall. Naruto doesn't answer Minato as his hunger for the chakra takes control of him once again, showing what a true Otsutsuki is, and he speeds towards Kushina and places his hand on her to absorb all the chakra out of her. But as he does this, Minato teleports to his side and knocks Naruto out of the way. Minato continues to send Naruto away from Kushina while still trying to hold back as Naruto has the appearance of a child. 
Naruto then begins to counter some of Minato's hits, showing his limited strength since his energy is low. After feeling Naruto's strength, Minato now comes to think that Naruto is some kind of creation made by some enemy that was created to look like a child to assassinate the Hokage and his wife. So believing this, Minato now chooses to not hold back because of Naruto's childlike appearance and now uses his full power to protect Kushina. Everyone in the village begins to hear noises outside and then they all look up to see the full Fukage fighting a strange pale white child. Since Naruto is currently low on energy, he can't one-shot Minato like an Otsutsuki could probably do so, so he desperately rushes to Kushina to absorb the large chakra that is within her, but once again, Minato stops him. Naruto then uses the Byakugan to check Minato's chakra since he's an annoying opponent and wonders how large his chakra is. When Naruto uses this ability, Minato freezes at the sight of it. The Hyuga Byakugan? As Minato says this, in shock, Naruto takes the chance to finally run at Kushina. As he does, he begins to absorb all of her chakra, including the Ninetales one. Once he finishes, Kushina starts to slowly die. His Otsutsuki power is replenished, and Naruto is now set to finally defeat Minato. Kushina, who is slowly dying from getting her chakra absorbed with the Ninetales as well, calls out for her unborn baby, screaming Naruto at the top of her lungs. Yes, Minato and Kushina had already named their child Naruto because of course Minato picked that out from Jiraiya. Minato hears Kushina's cries and races to his opponent as fast as he can, going for the kill this time. But as he does, Naruto forms a little grin and as soon as Minato's arm gets in range to attack, Naruto grabs it, then twists it, eventually then throwing Minato onto the ground. He stops onto his hand, releasing Minato's kunai he was going to attack Naruto with. But Minato doesn't give up here, he teleports again and again to each kunai he had left hiding around, trying to get an opening on Naruto to lay him down for good. Naruto is confused as to why Minato is still trying to attack him, even though he knows he's outmatched and defeated. He thinks about whether it's because he had hurt the woman he had absorbed the chakra from. Naruto continues to think about why humans care that much about other people because where he is from, everyone treats each other like strangers and not as a real clan. As Naruto thinks these things, Minato blitters around his view trying to catch him off guard. But Naruto easily can observe where his opponent is going thanks to his Otsutsuki abilities. So as Minato finally thinks he has found an opening and goes for the attack, Naruto swiftly uses the tool creation technique he had learned from other Utsutsuki members and forms a sword to cut off one of Minato's arms. Minato cries out in pain and falls onto the ground. I thought you could do better than that, human. But at least I got a batch of surprising chakra absorbed into me now, thanks to your companion who I think is dead. But before you die, let me ask you something. Why is it that you tried so hard just because I hurt that person? Do you really care? for one another that much? Minato coughs up blood and quietly chuckles at that question. As a leader of this village, I must care for everyone equally and protect the lives of the people of the village. Well, that's what a shinobi like me and many others should do as their job, so it's engraved into us. It's a normal thing to care for other people, and I did care for Kushina a lot, but now she is dead and also my unborn son, thanks to you. Enraged, Minato goes for one last attack using his remaining arm to form a Rasengan in the palm of his hand. Naruto, who is still processing all of the information Minato had told him, is caught off guard by the Rasengan and is blown away by the impact of it. After that, Minato falls onto the ground, now dead, because of all of the blood loss. Naruto then gets up and is shaken by the fact he let a human hit him, but when he checks his chest, he sees a scar. This shocks him a lot more, now scarred by the last attack of a human. As the leaf villagers then close in to see what has happened, Naruto disappears in the night and hides away to think about everything that has happened. We cut to Naruto hidden away and finishing up going through his thoughts on caring about other people like Minato had done. He forms a small grin and says that he kind of respects Minato for fighting to the bitter end and even though he was just a human. And since now Naruto respects Minato, he thinks that he should take Minato's unborn son's name for himself out of respect that his legacy shall continue on. Naruto himself is not fully good though, he's still a chakra craving Otsutsuki member and would need time to fit in the shinobi world, but for now he must journey across it and find out how to gain the skill of caring that the Otsutsuki themselves couldn't gain. Not too far away, some dark presence is watching Naruto, interested in his appearance, chakra and heritage. 
This dark presence is of course Black Zetsu, who has sensed Naruto's familiar chakra from miles away. Since Black Zetsu is the manifestation of Kaguya's will, it would of course recognize the appearance of an Otsutsuki, which is Naruto. And this actually frightens it, as they never knew the Otsutsuki would come back looking for Kaguya. Now Black Zetsu must try to find a way to speed up the process of reviving Kaguya, so it can combat against this new threat because it knows that the Otsutsuki would not try to be helping Kaguya. Naruto looks around until he hears a booming voice in his head. Hey kid, there's someone watching you from the bushes. Naruto looks at the bushes and sees rustling, which was Black Zetsu, but Black Zetsu had swiftly disappeared before Naruto laid his sight on him. He got away kid, too late. Naruto hears the voice again and wonders where it's coming from. Where are you? Who's talking to me? I'll kill you if you don't show yourself. Naruto then hears chuckling. Well, you certainly don't sound like the old man, yet you look so similar to him. Naruto then feels himself moving towards the darkness, only to be met with a faint light and a towering beast in front of him. An orange nine-tailed fox looks down on him, but not with the intent to kill. Who are you, creature? The nine tails stares right at Naruto, and now can see him clearly. I have a name, and it's Kurama. I used to know someone who looked similar to you. Naruto is confused about what the beast is saying. What's your name, kid? Naruto pauses and thinks about this, and then comes to the conclusion on what his name truly is. My name is Naruto Otsutsuki. And that's what I'm going to end it off for today. Hopefully you did enjoy, and if you did, make sure to get this video to 250 likes for the next part. After checking back on this what if, I can see how it's very different compared to my previous ones, but hopefully you like it enough so I can continue it. So, like always, subscribe if you're new, hit the like button, and turn on bell notifications. It's been the Blue Fang. Peace.